tutorial on using Multimedia Fusion 2. Um, it's been superseded now by Fusion 2.5, but while demos of that and the free version aren't available, I'm going to show you how to use Multimedia Fusion 2, which is uh, what Fusion 2.5 is built on. So, uh, when it opens, you have some blank windows of your workspace which shows all your projects you've got open. It's got a properties toolbar which I've moved to here from the bottom. It's normally down the bottom but it's better for my screen layout. I just uh, clicked and pulled it across and you can move it wherever you want. Um, and then you've got an area which can be filled with different things. Um, so, if I start a new project which I can either click on the white page for a new project or file and new, either will do it, or even control N. And then we get some things filling up. We've got application one in our workspace, no properties because nothing's selected, and in here this is our storyboard editor. So that's a picture of our blank level, just white level there, um, and then information about it. So we're currently in our storyboard editor, and if I click on the application, I actually get some settings in the properties. So for the games that we're going to make, we're going to make them at 800 by 600. Um, and in terms of that screen size, it means that a phone, it will show up fine on a phone. Um, and on a PC, it would be fine in a web page and full screen. It might be a little bit blocky, but it means that you can have games that work well on older computers. Uh, because the bigger the screen size, the more memory you use, and so uh, we're going to stick to a low size. So we're going to click on the different property tab of window, and we get the size come up, and it's 640 by 480, and we're going to click on that, and then there's an arrow here which allows us to select from a list, and there's lots of different ones here. Uh, we're going to choose 800 by 600. There we go. Uh, and click off that and then suddenly it asks would you like to modify the size of your frames now frames are the levels uh, so that they're the same size as the application yes of course we do we want everything the same size yes so this is now changed to be 800 by 600 so that's the only thing we're going to change there for the moment and now I'll show you the other sections the storyboard editors here and as soon as you collect, uh, click on a frame on the level it allows us to select up here the frame editor and the event editor. So the frame editor is here, and I'll just click on that, um, and we get our blank screen. Um, now, once again, no properties because we haven't selected anything, and nothing in this area here because we've got no items. To add an item, you can either double click and you'll get create a new object window, or you can click on insert new object. Um, or you can right click and click on insert object. So whatever you find quickest, do that. Uh, I think a double click in a blank space is easy. When your screen fills up, it's harder to click on blank space. So uh, you might have to end up using the insert, but double click. Um, now we've got loads of different types of objects here. I'm not gonna explain hardly any of them because we're always gonna use one or two really. We're gonna use active um, or we're gonna use a backdrop. So active is anything that moves or can be interacted with and we can give it a rule so an active object and it wants us to position it so just click to drop it right now uh, just to let you know you probably noticed if I click I get a red circle and if I right click I get a blue circle if I do both I get both um, and uh, that's just a program I've got so you can see what I'm doing when I'm clicking also if I hold down control or shift they show up in the magnified bit over there. Right, so I've got an object and if I click on it, surprise, surprise, the properties appear. Um, I'm going to pull it down here and I'm also going to click on it one more time once it's selected. I can resize it and I can make it bigger. So you get this little diamond shape as a default which you can change. But I'm going to make it that size and I'm going to choose how to move it. So I choose in the properties the movement and once again the properties bar I've moved up here. It might be down the bottom around this area but uh, movement and currently static, so that's not any fun, it won't move at all. I'm going to then choose eight directions. Eight directions is one of my favorite types of movement because it's quite arcadey. It uh, means that you can control it with a joystick uh, and in eight different directions. So, um, 
it comes up with the options for eight directions. I'm just going to click Try Movement. Try Movement opens up a window of, that the game would be in if we were running it for real. And then if I press up, oh, I press down, I can move it around left, right, press them both together. And it moves around. Now, if I press too much to the side, it bounces on the edge of the window. Now that's a little bit of a trick because in the real game it's not going to do that. In the real game, if I actually run the frame, rather than test the movement, if I go to the side, it's gone. It disappeared. If I go to the other way, it's gone. And that's not what we want in hardly any games. So you've got some options. So we're going to make a rule now. So we've had the storyboard editor, which shows us our levels that it calls frames. Um, it, then if you select that, you can get to the event editor, or you can just double click to get to the event editor. Uh, no, sorry, frame editor. Sorry, frame editor. And then uh, the event editor is the rules of the game. The event editor is a grid. You set a condition of what's happening, and then you set a response underneath the thing that you want to respond. So we want a new condition, and it's to do with our active object. We haven't named it. We haven't done anything useful with it. We've just said it can move. So we're going to uh, double click on that or you can right click on it um, and we're going to say it's to do with its position and we want to test its position uh, and we want to, and this is just something that's quite useful, tick all the arrows that point out of the area. So if we press, so the white is the, the level area, the frame area and then the grey is the outside so we click all the arrows that point to the outside and press OK and it makes a rule if our object leaves the play area, do what? Now we've got options. We could have something that affects something special or a sound, or uh, that's Alex having a yawn behind me. Uh, and you've got storyboard controls, you've got the timer. Uh, he's very self conscious now, but just say hello to him. Alex, say hello. He's, wa he's waving. Um, you've got a, t a timer which sets things going at certain intervals. Uh, create something new, something to do with mouse and keyboard, something to do with player one, like they get a life or they get a score, uh, something to do with the object. Surprise, surprise, it's to do with the object. If the object leaves the area, we're going to click on here uh, twice and we can insert our action. Now, the way that this works, I'll do it the long way and then I'll do it the short way. Um, you can insert action, so we click on this just once and then the new action is to do with the device, the active object, and we want its movement. You can either get it to stop or to bounce. Uh, now, stop just stops it. Bounce is what you saw earlier where we tried the movement. I quite like bounce because it's like it's hitting its head against the wall. Bounce, and there we go. Now, we're still in the events for that action, and we can build up new ones. We can right click and insert a new one uh, or yeah do that right click but I don't like that way of doing it so I'll close this window get back to there it's much quicker if I pull this uh, away just to get rid of it or even if I right click on it I can click on delete um, it's much quicker just use the right click so if I right click there rather than double clicking and then clicking again and then choosing the option. If I right click, I can jump straight to the option of what it's going to do. So I go movement, bounce. So the right click is a quick way to do that. Now if we run our frame, there it goes, bouncing away when it hits wall. Okay, so that's a quick introduction to how to have something and make it move. But main things to know about storyboard editor and the level editor and the event editor and what they do. So rules which are called conditions are made in the event editor. In the in the level editor with frame editor you edit the frame which is the level and the storyboard. So just remember a level is a frame and a rule is a condition. And yes, I'll then show you how to make a quick arcade game from this point.